So at this point in our video series, you should now have dynamic links working in your app. Any link you create in the Firebase console will open your app if it's installed or take your users to the App Store if it isn't. And then you'll be able to get at that link information when you get back into your app. And that's great. But my guess is most of the links you create won't actually be in the Firebase console. You're gonna to wanna to create them directly from code instead. Wanna find out how to do that? Well, keep watching. So generating dynamic links from the Firebase console is certainly an easy way to create a dynamic link. And we added this ability so folks in your marketing team could go ahead and like build a dynamic link for your Twitter feed without having to bother you, the developer. But creating these links through the Firebase console is a manual process. And for most use cases of dynamic links, like user to user sharing or creating a link that goes from your website to your app, you're going to want to create these links on the fly. Luckily, this is pretty easy to do with the client SDK. It gives you all the functionality you need to piece together a working dynamic link based on whatever data is in your app. Now, for my example, I've expanded my recipe app a little bit, so it's more like a master detail app. All my recipes are here in a table view controller, and then I click on one of these to see some details about the recipe. Then I've got this very big share button here that I'm gonna to use to create and share a Firebase dynamic link. Now, the exact specifics of my recipe app aren't super important here. The point being that in each of these detail screens, I have an object that I might wanna share with my users. In my case, it's a recipe. In your case, it might be a video, a level in a game, or a user profile. So the process for creating my recipe is gonna look a little something like this. First, I'm gonna create the URL parameter that my app will embed inside the dynamic link. Remember, this is the information my receiving app is gonna to use to determine what to show the user who clicks on it. Next, I'm gonna generate this full dynamic link using the client library to help me out here. It's gonna end up looking a little something like this, which I know is pretty big and ugly, but in our case, if we think we're gonna to wanna to share something a little nicer looking, we can use the shortening service to turn this giant dynamic link into something that looks a little cleaner, something like this. Okay, ready to start coding? Me too, let's get cracking. So here I am in my recipe detail view controller. Notice that my view controller has a recipe var, and in my case, it's little more than a struct with a few values. We've got the ID, a title, an image, and a description. And then down here, I've got my share button was tap method ready to be implemented. So first off, let's figure out the value of our link parameter. This is the URL that my target app is gonna use to figure out what recipe to show when a user clicks on it. Now, if this were a real recipe app, I'd probably want this value to correspond to the location of this recipe on my website. I'm gonna assume it looks a little something like this, and so that's what I'm gonna create here. Now, if I were feeling lazy, I could probably just put together this URL with a little string interpolation, a little something like this. I'd add the URL here, and then at the end, I could add the ID of this particular recipe object, but creating URLs like this can be a little messy and maybe a little error prone. So I'm gonna do this the right way and use URL components. This is a library Apple gives us to help piece together URLs without having to do it in one giant string. So first off, I'll create my components variable here. Then we'll specify our scheme, which is HTTPS, the host, which is the domain of our website, and our path. And by the way, it's very important to add that slash at the beginning of your path, otherwise the entire thing won't work. And if I were doing this for real in a production quality app, I would not be hard coding these strings in here like this. I'd probably wanna pull them out into a constants file or something. Now to add the query string at the end, I'm gonna create a URL query item. So uh, we'll say let recipe ID query item equal a URL query item. It's gonna have a name of recipe ID and the value will be the actual ID of the recipe that I have loaded up here in my view controller. Then I can say my components.queryItems is equal to an array that just has this query item in it. And I am done putting this together. Now, if I set a link parameter variable equal to components.url, this will equal the full URL with all these bits properly assembled together. In fact, just to be sure, let's print it out. I am sharing link parameter.absolute string, and uh, we'll test this. So I'll run my app load up my apple pie recipe and click the share button. And sure enough, there's my URL parameter there in my console, ready to go. Okay, next step is to embed this parameter inside a dynamic link. It's gonna look a bit like the previous step in that we're gonna piece it together using a components object, but this time it's a dynamic link components object. So I will let share link equal dynamic link components. Now this initializer here takes in the two arguments that are required for any dynamic link. We've got the link parameter, which is the URL I just created, 
and the domain URI prefix. This is basically equal to HTTPS plus the domain of my dynamic link that I want to use. In my case here, it's HTTPS colon slash slash recipe rally dot page dot link, but you feel free to copy whatever dynamic link domain you're using here. And again, don't hard code these string values in here like this for a real app. Put them into like a property or a constants file or something. Okay, now there are a ton of additional values we can add to this thing. We'll go over some of the most common ones. Now, you're gonna see that in general, I'm not gonna add properties to this components object directly. Instead, I'm gonna be creating smaller objects, things like dynamic links iOS parameters, dynamic links social parameters, and so on, and then add properties to them. Maybe this will make a little more sense when I start coding, so let's do that now. So first off, I'm gonna need some iOS parameters. So I'm gonna say that my share links iOS parameters property is equal to a new dynamic link iOS parameters object. And here it's requiring that I add my bundle ID, so I could add that string in like this. But you know what, let's get a little fancier and bring up our bundle ID programmatically. If let my bundle ID equals bundle.main.bundle identifier, then we can create our parameters object with my bundle ID like this. Oh, that's nice. So fancy. All right, next up, I'm going to specify an app store ID. This is so that we know where to direct users that don't have the app installed. And once again, because this is not a real app, I'm going to use the app store ID of Google Photos here as a placeholder. But you go ahead and use whatever app store ID is appropriate for your app. And then there's other parameters I could add here as well. If I were using a custom URL scheme that wasn't my bundle ID, I'd specify that with this custom scheme value. Or I could specify a different bundle ID for iPad users, or specify a URL to go to instead of the App Store if my user doesn't have this app installed. But I don't need any of that here, so let's move on. Now, I know my app doesn't have an Android version, but if it did, I could add that too. I would say share links Android parameters are equal to dynamic link Android parameters with a package name of eh, probably something like this. And you'll notice here, I don't need a separate Play Store ID because I'm pretty sure in Android land, your package name is the same as your Play Store ID. Next up, I'm gonna add the social meta tag parameters, which equals dynamic link social meta tag parameters. These are optional, but remember these are used to both control how your link is displayed and to help populate that, hey, we're about to send you to the App Store page. So I definitely recommend adding them. Uh, so I'm gonna add a title and I'll make this based on the title of my recipe, something like recipe name from recipe rally. Next, I'll add a description and well, let's make this my recipes description. That seems like a good idea. Finally, I'll specify an image URL, and I can make this the image of my recipe. Now, there are other parameter collections I could add to, things like analytics and iTunes affiliate parameters, but you know, I think this is a pretty good start. So finally, I'm gonna guard let long URL equal the share link dot URL property, otherwise return. And you know, for debugging purposes, let's print out this long URL to make sure it looks good. I'll run this one more time, pick a recipe, click share, and you can see that I've got a giant URL here that's got all the parameters I specified earlier. In fact, you might notice that this looks incredibly similar to the URLs you get from the Firebase console if you were to click on the link details option to see the full link. And to be clear, I could go ahead and use this link as is. This is a completely usable dynamic link, but it is kind of long and in some contexts it might look bad. So we can use dynamic links shortening service to shorten it instead. Now making this call is pretty straightforward. There's a static dynamic links components dot shorten URL method, but I can also call share link dot shorten directly. So I'm going to do that. This will give me a callback with the shortened URL, an array of warnings and optionally an error object. So in the callback, I can do some standard error checking. I can if let error equals error print out, oh no, got an error and then return. I could probably also print out any warnings I get. There's a good chance you'll see a warning or two when you shorten a link like this. And while they're generally not bad enough to quit out of the callback early, you should still know about them. So warnings here is an optional array of strings. And there might be a more elegant way of doing this, but you know what? I'm just gonna say if let warnings equals warnings, then for warning in warning, print FDL warning, and then print out the warning message. But notice I'm not gonna return out of this function because like I said, warnings generally aren't bad enough to stop using a dynamic link entirely. Okay, finally, let's guard let URL equal URL else return to make sure we actually have a URL here. Now I can print out that I have a shortened URL. All right, this is looking pretty good. Let's test this. So I'm gonna jump into this recipe. Looks tasty, so let's share it. And you can see that it prints out the link parameter, then the long URL, and finally the shortened one. You might have seen that there was a slight delay there because shortening that URL does involve a network call. And that's gonna be the drawback here with using the URL shortener. 
Also, I'm getting some warnings. It's warning me that I specified an Android app as part of the dynamic link, but it couldn't find one in my Firebase project, which is a valid warning because I don't actually have one. So you know what? I'm just going to remove that whole section. Also here, it's telling me that I haven't supplied any valid whitelists for this dynamic link. This is also a valid warning because it means that some evil person could create a dynamic link with the domain of recipe-rally.page.link that actually goes to a different app or redirects them to a completely inappropriate website, and I probably don't want that kind of thing associated with my short link domain. Well, oh, it's disgusting. Now I can probably show you how to fix this in a follow-up video or blog post, or you know, you can just read the directions in this link here. They're pretty good too. But otherwise, this is all looking good to me. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish up by sharing this link. Let me define a helper function down here. We'll create show share sheet with the URL. And then up here, I can call self.showsharesheet with the URL. I should probably add in a weak self and then make this optional. And then down here, let's define the function. Maybe I'll whip up some promotional text here. We'll say, uh, check out this great recipe for recipe title, and we'll nil coalesce that, that I found on Recipe Rally. And then let me create a really basic UI activity view controller with activity items, promo text, and the deep link URL that we want to share. And this should be enough to pop up a basic, hey, share this URL activity sheet. And then we can present that view controller. And well, that's actually all we need to now help our users share this link. So uh, here, let's try it out now. I'm going to run this on an actual device. And you can see that I have a number of options where I can share this. These are basically a bunch of share extensions installed on my device that have told iOS they can handle URLs or text. And so you can see I can share my dynamic link on Twitter, or share it on Facebook, or share it through Gmail, or WhatsApp, and a number of different messaging services. Now, every app kind of does its own thing in terms of how it chooses to display this link, but you can see that for the most part, it's getting its information from the social metadata parameters that I generated dynamically for each one of these. You might have also noticed that there was a slight delay every time I tried to share a link, and that's because there is that network call to the URL shortening service. And so if this were a real app, I'd probably want to show an activity indicator while this link is getting prepared so users know that there's some work going on behind the scenes here. Also, depending on how much I hate that delay, I might choose just to share the long URL, which doesn't require the network call. Also, I know some developers will actually use the REST API to batch generate thousands of dynamic links in advance and then just store them in their app alongside the rest of their data. That way, they have a short link ready to go as soon as the user wants to share it. Personally, though, I'm not a big fan of that solution. For starters, it means if you ever want to change the way these links are displayed, you have to redo all those links that you pre-generated ahead of time. Also, if you generate these at runtime instead, you can do some really nice things like A-B test your dynamic links or modify how they appear through remote config, some cool stuff like that. As for how to receive these links and direct users to the right place, well, here's what I did. Basically, I updated my handle incoming dynamic link function from the previous video to parse the link parameter using URL components. Then I grabbed the URL arguments using query items. Then I checked to see if my path was equal to slash recipes. Again, probably not something I should be hard coding like this. If it's equal, then I grab the recipe ID from my query items here, instantiated a new recipe detail view controller from the storyboard, and then told the detail view controller to load up the recipe based on the ID from the link. And then I pushed it onto my navigation controller stack. Now, I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time focusing on what I did, though. This is very application specific, and you're probably going to want to do something completely different in your own app. But you can see that when I click on this dynamic link through Facebook or Twitter, my app opens up and then it redirects users to the recipe that I wanted to share, which is really nice. So by generating your dynamic links programmatically like this, you can enable user-to-user -user sharing for all sorts of things. Like maybe in a game, you can have users share replays of really cool game sessions or share custom levels they designed. You can have users share links to their profile in an exercise app so they can show off how swole they are. Do people still say that? I, I don't know. Or you can have users share links to their current ride or like their promo code in a ride sharing app. There are really a lot of possibilities here and you can really generate just about anything you want into a dynamic link if your client has the right information. So there you go. Hopefully this gives you everything you need to start generating dynamic links in your app. Have you started using them to share something fun or interesting? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.